Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Geek 2.0 podcast. We got a special, another special edition. It's not, it's not Christmas time yet. Yeah. She just kept bugging me, though. She's like, I want to be on the show. I know, right? It's just like, okay, fine. You can be on it just this once. We got a special guest, Susie. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, with all of my begging, for finally allowing me to join you today. <laughs> and that's our episode. Thank you and good night. <laughs> now, actually, today we're actually going to be talking about the how movies, movie theaters, have grown from pretty much before it's a silent film. That was way before our time. Yeah. To you know Not what by it much, is, but you know, yeah, <laughs> so it's a few years before. I'm younger <laughs> and fresher. It was Manila. Oh, I was going to say millennials. <laughs> <laughs> millennials. <laughs> but we're going to talk about the movie theaters and how the tech and families and how everyone is more of like an experience and stuff as it is now from mm-hmm. what it was before. And then also camera tech and experiences with family and what we've gone through, going through the whole uh, growing pains of our digital and analog lives. And we had to bring in my wife because she is very photography heavy just very much on the camera always got a camera with her always very snapping true. pictures always <laughs> complaining that she's always behind the camera and not in front also true that is something that <laughs> many many mommies complain about it's the fact that they have a million photos of their children and their spouses with their children but not themselves unless it's a selfie so first thing i'm going to say and i'm getting bossy right off the bat If you have a wonderful mommy in your life who cares for your child, make sure you snap a photo once in a while of her doing just that. Preferably when she's made up. (laughs) Which is why there are no pictures. (laughs) You can tell your jokes on your podcast, but I'm always a bombshell. Well, another thing, this is going to be the first episode we actually go into a Jerry Springer moment. (laughs) Are you going to be Steve? (laughs) <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> I'll come out of shadow if I'm separate you two. <laughs> no, it's basically let's go ahead and just jump right into the uh movies, movie theaters. Going into I don't know, I guess when your childhood is what you had like maybe one or two theater uh mm-hmm. movie theaters. They were definitely smaller, yeah. Yeah, we had uh AMC and there was a whole bunch of different ones. More of like a uh, main street type of uh mm-hmm. small theaters. Well, there was the one uh, that's off of uh, 19 here, but there was that one AMC that's got, what, 12 screens, I think? The old movie co? Yeah. yeah. Um, and when that opened, like, that was the, the well, theater. That was a big was, deal. It was where we're going, we're going local for everybody. Yeah, it's fine. But it's now a car dealership. It's the Jerry Oak. No. It's one of the car dealerships. It used to be a theater. Yeah, that that's old. Yeah, that yeah. one there. But it's the, basically the theaters were like level seating. Correct. There's no there's no such maybe, thing as stadium. Maybe a slight like slope to it. And there's stereo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and usually there was only one screen showing one movie. So you had one specific time yep. that you had to be there. And that was about it. If yeah, you if you to weren't there, it. well, guess what? You got to wait what, a couple years for it to come on VHS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I remember the first time going to a theater. It was actually, we lived in Zephyr Hills and going to the small theater and watching um, a Star Trek. I was uh, Voyage Home, <laughs> dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you just take, uh, do your math and see how old I am. <laughs> the first movie I remember watching in the theater was The Little Mermaid. I don't, I have no idea. I really you can't. Don't, I don't remember what the first movie I saw in theater was. Before yeah. you you were hatched? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pod person? <laughs> well, just like you remember, you'd have to check the newspaper to get the movie times. Yep. And then mm-hmm. eventually you could call a phone number, Mr. Movie Phone. <laughs> Thank yes. you for calling Movie Phone. <laughs> <laughs> or you could call the local theater to ask them what time the movie started. And now you just Yeah, you get the kid phone. on the other end like, uh... I don't know what... How did I have to ask my manager? Uh, Steve, what is that movie coming out? And now in the matter of 15 seconds, you can not only have the time, but you can have your tickets ordered. And Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't even need paper tickets anymore. And that's it. Yep, you just it's all on your phone. phone. Yep. So it's basically... It's come a long way within, what, 20 years? It's incredible. Within our generation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's quite... You go from no stadium uh, theater seating to 
I I want to say is Jurassic Park when that first came out in '94. Mm-hmm. We went to go see it in a theater that actually had uh, it was a uh, uh, Dolby. It was like the new big thing. It was a Dolby uh, surround. Like you can hear the, the dinosaurs coming up from behind you. Mm-hmm. And that was like a big thing. It's like oh. Coming up behind you because you're looking around. <laughs> you hear that heavy breathing. You hear T-Rex and... pounding behind you. It was like a deep, heavy bass. But another thing is when IMAX came out, it was only in the one place that I knew of was at Cape Canaveral. Really? And that was it. We went uh, to have their uh, TV, not TV show, but a movie. It was like the space shuttle and stuff like that. And that's the true IMAX theater. Like the 30 or 50 foot screen the huge speakers and the thundering bass. To the IMAX that I was aware of was the one that was at Mosey. Mm-hmm. But that, that, well, that came dome, after, right? That was, yeah, it was after. Yeah. But that was the one that I was aware of. And yeah, that's the the dome type where you're you're really sitting back. Like you yeah, feel you like need you're to be fall. in a good position. Like you have to be in the middle of the whole theater too, because you're be straining yourself looking left and right. Well, when you're yeah. walking through the aisles, you feel like you're gonna fall down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's essentially a. A, a big semicircle that surrounds you from left to right, every direction, yeah, top you're in a to dome. bottom. Yeah. You are in a dome. So, and it was originally made for like your kind of like space and nature sure. documentaries yeah. and stuff. And then but I started they, showing like Titanic and <laughs> yeah, the Dark Knight. There was they played yeah. that there. <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know how you would experience like a movie, like an actual Hollywood type movie, and a dome IMAX. Uh, we've seen. One or two movies there, um, like motion pictures as opposed to a documentary. Yeah, like yeah. a like a Hollywood production. I think we saw something there, but I can't remember what it was. Now, this was years mm. years ago. It was it was okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was one of those things that the stuff on the side gets blurry. At least yeah, it that's, did that's for what me. I'm thinking because mm-hmm. it's going through like a almost like a fisheye lens or something. Yeah, because it has. To go from like a 2D or you know, a flat object to something that's in three dimension. Mm-hmm. Now, would any type of film that gets shown in that type of theater have to be filmed specifically for IMAX? Like no. we're talking about a regular motion picture sh- showing there. No, because at least from what I recall, like their, their documentaries and stuff like that were filmed that way. But back when we were talking, like when this was first out, IMAX cameras were re- ridiculously expensive and it was only documentaries because there's a specialized camera yes and it's probably like what i'm not guessing probably like a couple hundred thousand dollars for per camera maybe Mm -hmm. a million dollars a camera you know it's funny we we were actually before we started recording this episode we were talking a little bit about the different batmans and if i remember correctly at least that we saw the uh was it the Dark Knight mm-hmm. uh, was shot at least only a couple of scenes. Mm-hmm. It was the initial opening scene, and then like one or two scenes in the middle of the movie were shot specifically with IMAX cameras. And I remember we saw that. I think it was at Channel Side. We did. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember being blown away that first scene at first open, and they're doing the high skyscraper yeah. view of like the Chicago or New York or whatever. Gotham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little it's overwhelming. It's like Atlantis. We know it's there. We just don't know where. <laughs> it's there somewhere. It, it is a little overwhelming, though, at first. When you first experience sitting in an IMAX theater, watching a, a scene that is specifically filmed for IMAX, and it is. I mean, the size is huge. The sound is booming. The detail. Is the yes. detail. It's so crisp. It's incredible. I, it's, and I remember it sort of taking my breath away just because I was like, this is so different than any yeah. other experience I've had. Even being in the dome and watching a na- nature documentary, it was very different. But it's also gotten to the point now, though, where it's commonplace. You're not blown away by it sure. anymore. <laughs> yeah, because I remember, like, you talk about the documentaries, like, on uh, Young Astronauts Club, we went to Cape Canaveral, watched a uh, shuttle go off, and watched a movie. And the IMAX there is, like... You're in it, and all of a sudden, it's like a quiet scene starts out with like a the sunrise over the um, the Gulf, oh, not Gulf Coast, the Atlantic Coast of Florida, <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like sonic booms, like boom, boom, like your chair is shaking, you can feel it. Mm-hmm. Now it's pretty much commonplace. Where it's, I want to say it's more like Fomax sure. in the new in the new theaters because it's not a true. This is basically extended maybe a couple 
10, 20 feet on either yeah, end. They've sure. made Top it a little bit bigger, and all the movies have gone digital instead of film, yeah. which is where you can really see a difference there. And it's louder. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. They've improved the sound system. It's now, so. as Dolby Atmos is now like this huge thing now, because mm-hmm. it's... Not just front and back, side to side. It's also top and bottom. Mm -hmm. Like you're surrounded, you're pretty much immersed in. I mean, there are times you feel it in your chest because it's just so intense. And I feel like all the movie theaters, the different like chains, not the actual theaters themselves, but like your AMC's and stuff like that. I feel like all they do is take the same system and just put different three letters in front of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Well, look at AMC. They have it's it's uh, was it AMC Max or. I forget the name of it, but it's basically a Dolby Atmos uh, sound system. Mm-hmm. And then like Regal's got like the DX something other system. Well, no, and... that's the the shaking chairs. It's the DXC or something. Where you, it might be what I'm thinking of. But... Well, you're saying that it's only a f- so many uh, rows where your chair is actually being moved on hydraulics. Yeah, that's yeah, that's different. That's where things are now. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is nice. For the right movie. Yeah, you don't want to... (laughs) uh, Car chase scene, you're like, okay, this is a bumpy road for the past 40 minutes. I guess it's better than a Western riding a horse. (laughs) 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 But but it's an interesting point to bring up, though, because there are times where it feels like when you're sitting in those seats, as amazing as it is that you can immerse yourself like into the movie in that regard, sometimes it is distracting and it actually takes you out of the moment, I think. Well, again, it depends on the movie. Yeah. I mean, well, have you seen The Hobbit in the theaters when the... Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, with the, the Peter Jackson, the, not, it was like the uh, 60K or whatever. It was like the more, like 120 hertz, mm-hmm. where everything seemed like a soap opera. Mm-hmm. A lot of people hated that because it's, we're so used to 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, like a normal style movie. Sure. But this has took everybody out because everyone's moving like they're... You're, you're, Real life. Mm -hmm. And it almost seems like it's in fast forward in a way. Yeah. I remember when we first got our television, it was actually difficult for me to adjust to it because I felt the same way. It was almost like everything was so hyper real Mm -hmm. that I'm like, this, it feels like the motion's too fast, even though it's actually just fluid movement. We also made a pretty big jump though because we went for, because I I love this stuff. So we went with a TV. It was huge. We had, it was a 70 inch, but it was bigger. Go home. Yeah. (laughs) What we had was that stood on the floor and it was one of the rear projection. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. RGB. Like it was, it was, it worked great. It did 1080p, but it was a different style. And then we went from that to led, (laughs) not 4k, but still the high def led real thin. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, we put it on and it was very, very cool to see, but then what really brought it out in my attention, in my to my attention, was uh, actually Ant Man. Uh, we were watching someone's uh, like download of it, but it was a 4K download okay. that we were streaming on it, and you could really, it was like really weird to see because <laughs> it did. It gave that motion that just it was. It's not. It doesn't seem because we're for hundreds. I want to say a hundred years or so. We've been our brains have kind of seen the same kind of setup and motion mm-hmm. for all these years and generations. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, they want to flip it, say, "Hey, now this is what we're doing with 120 hertz." So I, I forget the exact term, but it's like no, people re- rebelled against it. Right. They don't, it'll it'll still it'll come back though yeah. because the it's the kids be a... nowadays growing up like they're going to get used to what's blowing us away now mm-hmm. is their childhood you mm-hmm. know like when we look back on old cartoons and we're like oh this is great you know to like the static information in the back with oh, the yeah. dynamic colors and you know what's going to move what's not hand drawn images yeah and, and it's really well, cool to it see it was also kind of we were sitting there with a bowl of sugar and milk yeah. <laughs> well that certainly <laughs> that helped still do <laughs> <laughs> But it, yeah, he still does that on Saturday morning. It's great. <laughs> um, but that's what, you know, the kids are going to grow up with what we're looking at is amazing. That's going to be their nostalgia. You know, God only knows what's going to be for them that they're going to look back on. It's going to blow them away. Do you guys find yourselves feeling nostalgic when you go to the movie theater now that all the films are digital? Do you feel nostalgic for the old film, seeing the little burn marks in the corner? Or and the, the little hair that comes, the little hair that comes hanging through? Out. <laughs> or, or being able to tell where they spliced it together. Do you miss that? Because I find myself sometimes going, you know, I, I, it's part of the charm of yeah, the experience. It's, it's one of those things where maybe if you have like, if you're one of the unlucky few that all of a sudden your film just melts. 
Sure. <laughs> you probably... Everything goes nuclear white. <laughs> I, in my opinion, I, I think I'm too much of a fanboy for tech and geek that I not nostalgic for no. it I enjoy no. the because I'm going I'm paying for the experience so I want the new experience I don't mind at home like re-watching old tapes and movies and stuff like that that cool I, I'm doing that for that aspect of it but when I'm going somewhere I'm paying for that new experience see for me it's the opposite for the exact same reason to me we have so much technology we have such a, a technologically advanced setup at home that it's almost like part of the experience to me in going to the theater is it being different than what we experience at home. Because essentially at this point, going to the theater, unless we use D-Box where the seats move mm -hmm. or uh, we are watching something in IMAX or a dome, it's basically just a larger and louder version of what we have at home. So the experience isn't that much different to me. So I do kind of miss the old film just because it at least has some aspect that's unique to that experience as opposed to just watching it at home. Yeah, because I, I would have to agree with, with that because nowadays, especially with like our uh, superhero movies or any kind of like movies that are are like Star Wars. Let's take that for The Force Awakens when it first came out. Excuse me, don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> Breaking stuff. <laughs> but it was one of the things where I don't know how it would feel if it was film on film. Mm -hmm. Like you have like it's a low quality image and you have the screens are now what eight or twelve k at the movie theaters, so they're like laser precision. Precision, mm -hmm. but I don't know how the experience would come across. Like, yeah, you'll have your great sound and everything, mm -hmm. but you're looking at like the uh, subtle like softness. I want to say it's not crisp, mm -hmm. but that only works for certain movies. Because I know uh, Quentin Tarantino, he says does all his movies on actual film. Mm -hmm. He's one of those purists. And he doesn't... He actually think he even has a theater over in California that he um, premieres his films on and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me if, if in time film theaters started coming back. Well... Not many. I'm not talking like coming back as in like making a comeback, but like you yeah, started you're not seeing see them at the mall. Yeah, no. <laughs> but like if you started seeing almost like specialty theaters, sure, okay. that would do that. I would. Something along the line like an Alamo Draft House, where that that whole experience. I I haven't experienced it, but as whereas like you you'll get kicked out of the theater for like looking on your phone or talking. And it's one of those things where it's like, yes, can we have that back? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm 100% on board for that. Because again, you know, if you're taking the time, it, the, the whole purpose of this podcast essentially is to be for geeky parents, right? So it's, no. it's no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what podcast is Wait this? Wait a second. <laughs> so, you know, thinking about the fact that the majority of us work full time, whether we have office jobs or our full time job is being a parent and, you know, caring for our households or whatever it might be. And so when you finally are able to take the time away from your family and maybe you're having a date night or, or you're going above and beyond and you're going for this experience, you want to be able to be completely immersed in the experience. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. Well, and it's so, also the monetary uh, value of it too. Absolutely. The ticket prices have jumped. Oh, like Because I remember it was what, like 2 or $3. On, sure. a, on a like a mat, not even a matinee, but on a Friday night. Yeah, a regular well, movie. I remember five dollars for five bucks opening night. You could see Harry Potter. Yeah, you well, know. Well, and it's not just the tickets themselves, but the concessions. Oh. Well, there's ways around that. Yeah. <laughs> you go to the dollar store and. You... <laughs> well, I've heard that Jinkos are making a comeback. So. <laughs> well, I will. To be fair, uh, if we're again comparing what used to be to now, it used to be it was just popcorn. Mm -hmm. and drink and then they added oh, candy maybe, too well yes and then they added maybe nachos or a hot dog now you can go there and it's almost like a full restaurant meal sure. yeah other, and yeah. that's at your standard theater I mean, you not even chicken your, and waffles and that's not even theater. your cinema cafes you know cinema sure. cafes is completely theater different theater you're going to for chicken and waffles AMC Woodlands yeah really? Woodlands yeah. yeah they got chicken and waffles there they have yes. chicken and waffles <laughs> Wow. Now, and it's now actually it's, not bad it's a waffle with like a chicken tender but still it's chicken and waffles <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. So I have a question for you guys, uh -oh. and I don't know the answer to this, so I'm not setting you up. I was gonna say this is why she wanted to come here. Yeah, I know. So right? Because <laughs> we're in trouble now. <laughs> because so many of the films are digital now, and they're not on film. Do you know what kind of security is in place for these theaters for these digital downloads to keep 
people from pirating the films before they premiere or I mean do they have secure servers I think servers? they are coming in on uh, hard drives or there are satellite downloads Okay because I don't you remember know if there's satellite downloads yet I know they were going that yeah. way but I'm not sure if they are they could be I don't. I haven't been in the. I haven't worked at a movie theater in a few years. There's no longer the, 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 <laughs> the cans couple. being delivered on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, correct. Well, that's that's ultimately why I'm asking that question because as we're talking about films, you remember they used to ship films to theaters under code names. There correct. would be, mm-hmm. you know, these little secret code names so that you wouldn't quite know exactly what film it was. And so I'm wondering, you know, you don't hear a lot about um, people you know essentially sealing these downloads and streaming these movies so there has to be something in place that they're using technologically to keep people from stealing these films as they're going to the theaters i don't know necessarily if there's anything more in place than there would have been Mm. um the same in my opinion and again I, i i don't know for sure but i would think it would be the same kind of security that they had with the film reels with the difference being that now films would just come in like a UPS box or yeah. uh, an envelope. Well, then they used to so you do wouldn't that, really though. know. It's just that the theater's getting mail. You wouldn't know that a movie's in there. Whereas before the film cans, you knew what it was, so they had to take that step. Hmm. But once it gets into the theater itself, it's whatever theater type uh, security or you know uh, measurements they have in place. I wouldn't think those would change too much because people did. Even back with the film reels, they would still clip film snippets and mm-hmm. take those home, or sure. you know, small little. Uh, I know a lot of the big thing was trailers. Yeah, uh, people would take the trailers home and the, the smaller cans. I don't see why they couldn't do the same kind of copy of a film or a trailer now. You know, unless well, I don't it's think just a matter of not allowing was... them to have. Like, I mean, in the simple aspect, any type of computer or system that would have the files would not have access to the internet, and it's all air gapped. Yeah, mm-hmm. and any any type of information, like whoever is in the projection area, they probably just would not allow any personal thumb drives or hard drives or, or cell anything phones. like that. Well, I don't know. I mean, you have your cell phones, but it's just. There will be no uh, out, outward-facing active USB ports to plug into. Makes sense. There, there might be, but there'd be only for like you plug it in basically for a firm, firmware update. I yeah. just find it curious because <laughs> it does seem like there are still people who go in and sneak their little cameras and record movies and upload mm-hmm. them to the uh, internet. That industry is going to be so. It's still going to be big. Well, that's it. But I'm, I'm thinking. Well, I mean, not that I'm <laughs> saying that. You know, I think the bad guys should be bad guys, but it seems to me like it would make more sense to actually get the, you know, either the the streamer copy or. So or, you, what you're saying is this: you're getting off your chest that this is what you used to do. A thousand percent, <laughs> absolutely. You're, you're, part, you're sending it to. Why can't uh, they get it from the source instead of filming <laughs> yeah. it themselves? Is what I mean, I'm for. just saying that when I download a movie, Alina, <laughs> you no, want I'm just, quality. I'm surprised though. I just I was curious about that because you know, like even when they do the special events, like the Fandango special event, where it's like a one mm. or two showing of you know a specific concert or yeah. movie or whatever. Um, it seems to me like those are streamed or sent at a very specific time. So I feel like, you know, for security purposes, I don't know how well, they have I think that it so locked is down. Streamed because I think it is. Well, it's Something like the Doctor Who st- uh, that they come out same day and time as when it's premiered over in England on BBC. You can see watch it in the AMC theater. Mm-hmm. And you pay your ticket, and that's it's. I think it is streamed. It's it's a good broadband that they have. They probably have a good solid connection Mm -hmm. but as far as security i think because i remember going to one uh one showing of a somewhere and there was a ups dropping off the cans of film and you can definitely tell what they were there's a big green can film there was like a whole filled up a dolly and i was Mm -hmm. like okay what movie is this coming out it might be (laughs) (laughs) spider-man because it was like a uh, tuesday or wednesday i mean are we talking like Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yes, yes oh. the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Well, if it's Spider-Man 3, I hope it ends up in a dumpster fire. <laughs> because that's my sentiments on well, that. You didn't like uh, emo uh, Spidey? Not so much. <laughs> it's like I had you can a... direct your hate mail to Geek 2.0 podcast. <laughs> um, I had a, a friend that was working at the theater when those came out. And that was, uh, at least the trailers came out. And that was around the September 11th because mm-hmm. they had the trailer with the Twin Towers and the web in between. Oh, yeah. That after the 
the 9-11, they had to cut that from there, and he actually has the film oh, reel the, of that. Yeah, Nice. Because <laughs> that's, that's good money. Put it on eBay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I have a question for you now, too. So Who? You. Me. Mr. Josh. Yeah. So, but remember, this is audio format. We don't I, have... I said Mr. Josh. <laughs> I can see you looking at me. <laughs> So, Joe and I are obviously the parents of a daughter, but she's very young. She's only a year and a half old. So, we haven't gone through the experience of taking her to a theater yet because she's not quite ready for that. Mm -hmm. My question for you is, at least for me, my experience was as a child, even though going to the movie theater was something that we got to do, it was always a very exciting experience and I was always impressed by what what, what we were experiencing by going to the movies. With your daughter being the age that she is, she's a little older than a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Is a little bit older. A little bit older. <laughs> is she still impressed by the experience of going to a theater and sitting through a film and experiencing that way? I, yes, she is. Even it's, with... We go, well, the only time we go to a theater, if it's like, you know, the big uh, Affinity War, or, you know, the big movies that are coming out, mm-hmm. we're not going to go to, like, uh, Molly and Me. or <laughs> We'll wait for that. It comes on Netflix or something. <laughs> so you can cry in the privacy of your own home? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, so she's still impressed by the experience of it, even though as a child uh, growing up in this time, she has a screen and movie of accessibility 24 7. Oh, yeah. She can always stream a movie on a phone. You could be sitting in a restaurant and she could be watching a film. Well, the difference here is that she doesn't watch movies all that often or TV shows. She's mostly on YouTube. Gotcha. Watching uh, unboxing videos. Uh, not lately. It's, she's moving to. Um, Minecraft videos and um, game like game plays or let's plays kind of like Twitch like watching people uh, she has uh, she wants to be on Twitch Ooh, yeah yeah I, I I listened to an earlier podcast I know you had yeah. discussed that that has to be scary as a parent it is. <laughs> um, you know to make the decision as to do you allow that and what accessibility do you get yeah, she her? keeps still she keeps still bugging me if uh, make up a, a name for her in her channel and that's tricky because that is the generation that she's growing up in that is the way that they communicate and how they game with with other kids mm-hmm. but on the flip side there are creepers and we want to keep yep, our kids because safe. of the 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 uh, ability to have stuff kind of on demand. Is there any attention span differences with having to sit no. through a movie in a theater? No, she not being she's at home where you can just pause and get up and go do whatever. Yeah, and she's actually even we have like a Friday mo- uh, family night uh, mm-hmm. movie nights, and she she's engaged and she even gets on my wife and say no phones. <laughs> <laughs> She'll take her phone and put it away. <laughs> That's she gets she gets actively engaged. She'll go good. turn off all the lights. We'll have to either want the popcorn or something, and sure. we'll watch a movie from start to finish. So, nice. do you find? Do you prefer the experience? Here's the hoping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna train that girl right. <laughs> uh, do you find that you prefer the experience of of watching a film with your daughter in the theater or at home, or does it just vary on what it is that you're watching? I like the experience of going to a theater. It's just mm-hmm. one of the things because I remember, you know, watching Jurassic Park with my parents, mm-hmm. uh, going to the theater and experiencing it there. And then I was I loved it when it what 2014 when they re-released it in theaters. I'm like, oh, it's Jurassic Park's coming to IMAX. Let's go! So good. <laughs> it's just as beautiful as I remember. <laughs> Have you taken her for the experience of a D box film? No, uh, we've actually um, not D box. It's more of the uh, like the Dolby Atmos mm. uh, experience because the only place that has it is the one theater in uh, Cobb and uh, the mall mm-hmm. that has that. And I'm like. Uh, I, I forget what, what movie we watched, but I was like, I wasn't too impressed by it. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, the seats move around a little bit. Oh, yeah, I felt that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Again, it depends on the movie. Like, yeah. The Where I think it's fun is any type of, like, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It can be a lot of fun when they're in the, you know, the in space flying and stuff like that, and you're going with them. Like, that's cool. That's cool, uh, yeah. Or, or if it's some type of heavy vehicle related movie again where you're feeling the motion with them that's where it's fun if it's like you're talking Molly and me <laughs> I mean, what would, it was like you'd be in a truck like I said it's like oh we went to the store okay wow that was a great experience let's, let's actually do that in real time <laughs> but the, the one thing I can think of that we haven't touched on yet with theaters that's now different than what it used to be would be assigned seating mm. oh my gosh that was like <laughs> heaven sin. <laughs> 
Because you don't have to show up to the theater. like it, 40 though? minutes. Yes. Oh. Well, see, to me, though, that's also part of the experience. Well, no. that's the experience I did not like. <laughs> I don't miss that at all. Because you have to get there at least an hour, especially for like a big movie, an yeah, hour or two hours before. Oh, trust me. You're I, in line. I remember. And then you have that bum rush into the door. And you get the center set, uh, seat. Again, part of the experience. You know what? I said no, but the truth is you're right. Because I remember many a movie that the three Harry of us. Harry Potter. The three of us you, plus more. of all people, <laughs> sitting down on the floor of Harry Potter with the kids surrounding you talking about the books and me just waiting to get in the theater and get a seat. A hundred percent. Wearing my Harry Potter t-shirt appropriate to whatever film it might be. Um, no, you're right. That is a fun part of the experience. But again, um, I think that because we're in a different time period yeah. in our lives and because our time feels so precious with the amount that we, that we work and we have children and we're trying to maintain households and relationships and stay sane and go to the gym <laughs> um, oh I think you made a funny it's so funny <laughs> uh, but, but taking all that into account I think that because our time is so much more precious I'm 100% on board for boom I picked these two seats I know exactly yep. where I need to be Show up, do what I need to do, enjoy the movie, and you don't. And you feel... can skip the the commercial, the annoying commercials, and totally. the uh, the NCN, or yeah, the, whatever it is now. I know. Go straight. Oh, trailers. Okay, let's see what watch the trailers. That's it. <laughs> yep. You can skip the pre commercials, watch the good trailers, yep. get the movie done, and you're out within. And you're out. Three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice three and a half hour little experience. Yep. Um, but no, I I definitely think that's amazing. But I am curious too. Um, if more theaters are going to start doing more of the 4D experiences with things like Sense and, um, you no, know. No, that's more like your theme park type, I want to say. Because with that, not everyone likes to get squirted in the face with a, like a, a fine mist of water. Well, not when everybody's cool. <laughs> but, I, but I actually think that that can make some of these experiences even more immersive than they are now. I don't know. Again, going back to Harry Potter, the last thing I need is to go into those haunted woods and see Aragog <laughs> and have the feeling of his family surrounding me. I don't need little puffs of air tickling your feet. Yeah, no. <laughs> Even when we go to the theme parks and we're at the um, what was it, Bugs Stitch. Life Shrek? Oh, the, the Shrek one, or yeah, a Bugs Life. No. Or Stitch when he burps that chili dog in your face. See that I'm fine with. Ooh, but as soon as the spiders come out on those other ones, my legs no, are off you. the floor. No, thank. No Stitch burp. <laughs> We, yeah, but I think about okay. So the, I guess I'm gonna I'm going to age myself here. <laughs> here. Um, but I remember hearing uh, Joe speak so fondly about uh, before it was Stitch when it was the alien experience, yes. right? You know, and he's that was good. he's breathing on the back of your neck and he's it's dripping and the whole thing. And I mean, I feel and now everybody should know by now. I think that I am in love with horror films. I think he's mentioned that before. It's my favorite thing. So of course I think of it on the horror side. Um, but I feel like crossing genres, there's lots of different ways that you could incorporate that. And it would be a really cool experience. There could be a car chase and you could smell burning rubber. I mean, the only, I think that the would be really problem, cool. They would have to come out with a way of making it reusable. They would have to make it easily uh, achievable mm -hmm. and affordable, really. Because sure. if you think about it, like, like you're talking about with that Stitch ride, it is built specifically for that experience. Sure. And let me Whereas, ask, also add, is that do you want to sit there for two and a half hours with smelling burnt rubber or tacos and stuff like that throughout the whole film? Third, not, was it, like, not even 10 minutes or so of an actual ride? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's more than enough. When you start going to extended editions of two and a half hours, like I said, then it starts to be like, okay, enough. Yeah, but I don't even mean necessarily doing it through the entirety of the film. But if there's one or two special bits, aspects yeah. where they can sort of incorporate that, it would be really cool. Because the thing is, taking it back towards the beginning of this conversation, it's not the same as it used to be in the sense that, you know, there was one or two or three show times for a film and that's it. Now it's at the point that movies are assigned to a specific screen, mm -hmm. and primarily that's the only movie that's going to show for the duration of of it being in the theater. So, um, you know, if it's just a matter of installing, you know, little misters that distribute a scent, um, if that's if we're talking about a Star Wars or a Harry Potter or something like that, then I feel like, you know, if it's one of the bigger studio films. I don't think it's impossible for them to incorporate that technology into the experience. I don't know if it's impossible. I just, I don't know if right now it's 
feasible. Sure. I, think I was just curious if you thought it was something road. that I mean, might that's something happen. that you, you or you, everyone that's listening can uh, send us or let us know what, what they thought as well. Yeah, there may be sure. other people out there that feel the same. Yeah, way they might say, really. you know, Yes, Susie. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not alone. Finally, They're somebody finally said talking it. Talking sense on this podcast. <laughs> I, I don't care about anything else. But... <laughs> I just think it's a cool concept. You know, it'd be a neat, a neat approach to you know even special engagements. I feel like it would be something that would be very similar to like 3D films. Where, sure, there's people out there that want it, that will enjoy it and go see it, but it's not the mass populous, mm-hmm. and it's, there's a lot of downsides to it, and it's just not feasible right now. And it expands and stuff like that. And the, and it's just like you said, it's not many people are going to enjoy it. Sure. You might be the minority. You might be the silent majority, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to Real D3D, do either of you recall going to the theater and watching a 3D movie with like... You know the old red and blue mm, glasses. No, you do? I don't. I, I don't remember what film it was, but I do remember those glasses. Yeah. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> but let's go ahead and jump into our another topic. Yes. Now this one is, of course, we're speaking about lenses and stuff like that, and film, and is actually the cameras that we've grown to love and hate most of the time. <laughs> that. When going into your childhood, you used what Polaroids or the uh, Instamatics or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. I remember the old big black block camera Polaroid that mm-hmm. had the big flip up. Sure, and you shake it like a Polaroid. Well, you're not supposed <laughs> you're to not shake. Supposed oh. to do. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you had the big old school Polaroids. Um, I mean. It, it's not camera camera, but I remember you and I used to play with the big on the shoulder video cameras. Oh, like the big Sony or Samsung. That had, yeah. the, that had the VHS tape yep. that fit in it. That and you the could microphone go on. on the front, right? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, mine didn't, but it had the ability for no, it. No, it oh, didn't have. Well, I think what you're thinking of was like the big shotgun mic on the yes. front. No, it was yeah. more like a little, a little speaker grill and it had the mic behind it. Oh, uh, cool. I remember him and I used to make little uh, stop motion oh. Lego <laughs> movies. <laughs> or I think the best one it was we did a stop motion film of a pair of shoes going through the room. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> it went into the room. It was, went around and it went to the bathroom. And this this is where we had like some special effects. We poured water into a toilet like he was going to the bathroom. Oh. <laughs> Flush the toilet and then back to stop motion and coming back. I think you need to find this film and I oh, think you need to release it on it's Twitter. Long gone. <laughs> we might have to do a reboot. You, oh, there you go. But also stop motion also with that old video camera. Yeah. <laughs> but like we had no idea exactly how stop motion works, so it was probably like maybe two second frames. Yeah. Aww. So it was like really paused in between. I bet that was a Amazing! I'm proud of you guys. That's really nice. But it's just one of the things. Like, okay, we had a, uh, this tool that, yeah, granted, we had no idea how to use it. We know how to turn it on, hit record, yeah. stop, hit record, stop, and then that's it. <laughs> I remember being fascinated when you could go back and replay what you had recorded, but you had to look through the little eye thing. Oh, the mm-hmm. eyepiece, yeah. The little eyepiece. So it was like teeny scale. tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a large base VHS tape, and then it became smaller cassette tapes mm-hmm. that you would put in there, yeah, right? Yeah, like 8 millimeter. And they had the, the, the adapters that were large VHS tapes that the little tapes would fit into. Yeah, <laughs> so you could watch it in the VCR. Play back your amazing stop motion shoe tinkling that's, in the that's toilet. That's what we did. <laughs> um, it's yeah. probably floating around somewhere in the house. Or... I, 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 <laughs> I could <laughs> look, but I doubt it. Oh, um, that's funny. But yeah, so I, me- I remember those old cameras, and then it started going to the 35 millimeter film, mm-hmm. you know, your standard. Couldn't let it see light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the film has been around for hundreds of years. Of course. Mm-hmm. But and it's more like a, a consumer type uh, aspect where you can go to like a Ritz camera at the mall, mm-hmm. look at all the cameras, the 35 millimeter cameras, and you can even go to um, Eckerd's or one of those places and drop off your roll of film. Yep. Right. And 
they will have to send this was before the instant the uh, one hour photo <laughs> they'll send it off to a, a uh, film lab yep. and a week or two later you get your prints back and you'll look through and say oh the, I had my thumb over the lens the yep. entire time <laughs> I had the cap on yeah. and seven smudged. of them turned out <laughs> and you only had uh, what 30 no 25 or 30 shots in a roll of film and that yep. was it with no idea how they came out you yep. just pointed and prayed yep. well I remember <laughs> prior to owning my first even film camera um, we used to use the disposable cameras all the time and even the quality of, of photos that you would get from a disposable yeah. camera versus a real film camera mm -hmm. it was like you know night and day well that's because the lenses were like absolute garbage yeah it was yeah. terrible <laughs> but I'm um, sure a, a lot of the people nowadays remember it but kids will have no idea of what it was like to open a camera put the cassette in there reel it out tuck it in mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then close so it, it load, and hope right. you got it going in the right direction <laughs> and then when it's done or it's jammed afraid to open it because you don't want to ruin what pictures may be available you and... might expose it to the light because yeah. <laughs> then when all of a sudden you open it and it basically didn't go anywhere it's just started like chewing off the little uh tabs in the bottom <laughs> yeah. for the gear sure <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. just, it was it was a good old school days. I'm I'm actually pretty excited that Polaroids have sort of made their little comeback just because again for nostalgia reasons. I I remember so fondly playing with friends and playing mm. with Polaroids and you know now they're cute and tiny which is fun. <laughs> they got a sticky back on them so you can like stick them on things. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember um I think I was in high school so I feel like you guys probably would have been graduated. <laughs> Uh, but they had little mini, little <laughs> mini Polaroids where it would take teeny tiny photos. They were almost like the size of stickers. Do you remember that? I think it was called like a Polaroid Pop, maybe. No idea. No, no. Uh, I remember decorating my locker with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's with, with speaking about like Polaroids and stuff because mm -hmm. uh, the Polaroid action. I know now not to shake. <laughs> that's all. You, that's all you do. You just, like, you'll sit there and shake it because you're like, okay, waiting. He what, only a knows minute. that because he learned that on pop up video watching the Hey video oh, from yeah. Outcast. <laughs> Polaroid made a big deal about his song because he said shake it like a Polaroid. He's like, you're not supposed to do that. But <laughs> it's just one of the things because it was a photo that you just took and you have your results within a minute or two. Mm-hmm. Instead of like before, which was a big deal, yeah, sitting it off for, or waiting an hour for some clerk at the Eckerd's or whatnot mm -hmm. to finish and hopefully not ruin everything. Mm -hmm. But we moved in from that into a, the, the uh, digital age, and I think we kind of fell like backwards with the quality of photos that I were agree. taken with those type uh, cameras because they were definitely not 35 millimeter quality. They weren't, but I think that at that time it was just more so the fascination with the instantaneous result. Yeah. You could snap a photo, look at, snap a photo, see, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you would snap a photo and then you would pull up your little screen and instantly you could know whether or not you got what you needed in the frame, whether or not it was in focus. Um, and that was a really exciting thing, especially for people mm -hmm. who um, you know, uh, enjoy photography as a hobby because then it was like what you see through the lens isn't necessarily what ends up being the final right. result of the photo if your settings aren't correct, you know. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go into a discussion of ISO. Oh. Stop. <laughs> okay. Your shutter taking, speed. <laughs> yeah. You're taking a landscape photo of a palm tree. It's five o'clock <laughs> at night. It's just before the golden hour. Sure. Okay. What is your f-stop shutter speed <laughs> well, what you and do is, ISO is that you, you use? You scroll the little wheel to the one that looks like a mountain, <laughs> and that's the landscape <laughs> setting. And then you take that photo. See, that's one above me. I'd have been like, where it says auto, you just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people would say, no, that's not what you do. <laughs> well, that's one thing that's pretty amazing about, um, especially cell phone cameras mm -hmm. now, is is the auto settings are actually pretty incredible. And um, you can also, you know, very easily take a picture where your object is in the in the front, and then you know the foreground, and then you have the back, and it's bl a beautiful blur effect. And, yeah, that bokeh. Yeah, effect. and you don't you don't even have to have um, any. This sounds bad, but a specific skill set to make it happen. You just focus in on what you want that object to be and snap that picture and it's beautiful and you can make yeah. a Christmas card. Well, a lot of, like, I want to say purists would sure. look at that and say, no, you're you're not classifying yourself as a photographer, and that's I'm using air quotes, <laughs> but you're, the uh, tools are better for the general public to make 
good, decent, or better photos than they would have if they had something else. Absolutely. I mean, with look at the, we have uh, like the new iPhones and the new uh, Samsungs and new Pixels that are coming out. Those photos taken by those devices are on par of a DSLR. Oh, they're, they're definitely, mm -hmm. they're getting better and better just because more people have it, so the demand is there. But I mean, when you look at the, because I remember, <laughs> I remember some digital camera that you had back in the day, it wasn't too bad. It was probably about maybe about three inches, roughly thick. But when you turn it on and the lens actually came out and extended another like two, three mm -hmm. inches mm -hmm. in order to give you the effect, uh, you know, to give you a better picture and stuff because, you know, you needed that room. And that was like, Oh, that's amazing! Like it yeah. was such a big deal and everything. And then the uh, the little zoom. point sure. and shoot type cameras, where the screen itself would actually come out and could turn, sure, so you could have it in different directions. Take the perfect selfie. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the times, because a lot of those cameras are coming out with the screen uh, comes out, mm -hmm. because I have I don't know what you have your, your DSLR. Mm -hmm. Is the screen come out or is that uh, fixed? No, so it's I have the same. Fixed. I have a, a Nikon D thirty three hundred, which I would like to take some shots, but I have to like lay on my belly on my stomach mm -hmm. with the on the ground. But with the newer ones, the screen you can flip up and have the same position, but you're not having to get sure. down in the, in, the, in the dirt. You can <laughs> See, get a better idea of, of exactly what your, it is that your lens is seeing. Yeah. See, that's Absolutely. where you got to get the technology involved because you have the plugins that go into the camera so that goes to a separate screen so you can have it on the ground and have your screen here and then click a little button in your hand that makes the camera to the picture. Uh, welcome to the camera world where that doesn't exist on a lot of <laughs> bodies. That's true. <laughs> but there are adapters that you can get for like, especially like it those depends, big though. DSLRs. Sure. Well, it depends. I'll take my camera. I have the capability where I can hook up like a microphone into it. Mm -hmm. the next model up, they remove that option. <laughs> and then also what's called a um, time lapse uh, re remote shutter. Mm -hmm. The cord, you can plug it in with mine. Next model up, they took that out. So see, I, you can do it. You're sitting there talking about the fact that you got to be, <laughs> you, can, you just told me you could do it. But it's also a lot of have like a wireless bridge where you can re uh, do remote shutter with your phone, mm -hmm. or you can download the photos from the camera to your phone. But of course, over that slow Wi-Fi, so it's <laughs> say so, okay, is it easier and faster for me to take the card out, put it in the computer, download it, do my work, and post it, than for it to be actually downloading to my phone and then start that whole process? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's interesting because I would say that primarily. Um, when you're trying to shoot photos of a family, especially mm -hmm. with children, you want a really quick shutter speed because everybody's moving, everybody's squirming, everybody's doing different things. Um, but another way that technology has made it easier for us in that regard is that um, you can splice photos together mm -hmm. and you can superimpose uh, an expression from one photo onto another. So if you have the perfect shot, but you know, dad sneezed at the exact <laughs> moment, but the dog, the cat, the baby, and the mom are looking, <laughs> they look great. Um, there's a way to digitally remedy that, which is Especially like the Samsung, they have that, uh, or where it's basically, it'll take the photo, and if your eyes are closed, it'll take another photo and then superimpose the two together, remove the one where your eyes are closed to make it a good, better photo. I mean, that's pretty incredible and also a little terrifying. <laughs> yeah, a little creepy, but... A little creepy. Um, but I think that's amazing, you know, and I also love the fact that, um, I mean, as soon as digital cameras became a thing that would be affordable for a regular person, um, which again was about the time that I was in high school, I had my digital camera with me 24 seven. And this is really, you know, back when I had my Nokia brick phone before <laughs> there was really a camera that you could do much with. Um, but it, it went everywhere with me. And then once technology got to the point where I could have a solid uh, camera on my phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was amazing. It made my life so much easier. Now I do still sometimes carry my little point and shoot my little, you know, cool pics in my back pocket. <laughs> um, and when I do more formal photographs, you know, when I shoot photos of people for, you know, Christmas cards or pregnancy photos or whatever, um, I, I use my Canon, um, yeah. you know, just because I, I do have more capabilities with that than I do with the point and shoot. On yeah, a cell you have phone. a better, you have a range of uh, stuff that you can do with the sure. actual DSLR and then a phone. It's 
close, but it's... But it's just not quite the yeah, same. Yeah, because you can change out your lenses. You can go for like you, uh, whatever millimeters in, whatever you want to do, wide shot, or you get straight mm -hmm. up close with the, the 50 millimeter. Or if you do want to keep your shutter open for you know a little yeah. longer because there's a body of water and it's running and you want it to have that smooth effect. Yeah, or, that's you silky know, smooth. That's silky smooth. Silky smooth. <laughs> silky smooth. <laughs> that makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, then you can absolutely do that with, you know, with your mm -hmm. Canon or, or, you know, whatever it is that Cause you Because that's have. what I did when we went to Yellowstone. I had sure. my, uh, my Nikon and I put it on the tripod and set it there for what, 30 second exposure mm -hmm. and the nice silky smooth <laughs> waterfall. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's also interesting to me that, you know, technology had always been where a camera was its own device mm -hmm. you know it was its own thing and the technology it changed with those and they became better and smaller and more capabilities and all that but then the fact that it seems that cameras themselves are kind of going away unless like you were saying unless you're you know going more professional route and you need all those extra options yeah. that most people aren't buying camera cameras they're just using their phone and that the phone manufacturers have seen this and have put the time and effort and technology into making the cameras on the phones better. It, that seems like of all the features you can do on a phone, that that to me seems interesting that that's where they went with it. Yeah. Well, and what I also find fascinating too um, is that people are so obsessed with filtering their photos and <laughs> oversaturating them to the point that it actually kind of takes away the essence of what the photo is. And I mean, it's not that I don't ever use a filter. I'm on Instagram just like everybody else. You know, sometimes I look good in Valencia, okay? Um, but, you know, in general, it's like... <laughs> look at these puppy dog ears. Like, look at these. I'm a cute little puppy. Um, but, uh, okay, well, now you're talking Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are listening, he just did a perfect representation of the puppy filter from Snapchat. <laughs> uh, you know, but I do feel like um, in a way it, it sort of does take away from the joy of the composition of the photo yeah. because you're not paying attention to the golden hour or the beautiful light, right? Because in two clicks you can quote unquote fix it, but it does kind of take away the essence and the joy of putting the time, the work, the effort, and the love into setting up that shot and then getting it. Mm -hmm. But do you, you know? think it's maybe changed from what you are shooting being the essence of the picture more so than what you are shooting is just enhancing the filter itself? That very well could also be the case because there, there are people that are digital photographers, meaning that is their medium. That's the way that they choose to make the art that they make. So ultimately whether it's a coffee mug a flower a puppy or their own hand um ultimately they're composing the shot just to put a filter on it and show all the cool things that they can use with technology to enhance that photo um but i guess we're comparing two different things because if you're if you're trying to get a picture of your family or your child or you know your baby eating a popsicle yeah. um you're not you're not going for the digital look. You want it to be a, a, a beautiful photograph where your child is the subject of that. Um, well, you're trying to catch that moment in time. That's it, you know. And that is one thing that I, I do love. And I, you know, as a parent, I try to always be present. There are times where I have my camera out more than I probably should just because I am trying to capture that perfect moment. And a one-and-a-half-year-old one is very fast, <laughs> very fast. And you got to be quick with You're the You're wily. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got to hit that button fast. Um, so I've, I've tried to be present. There are times where I am so caught up in trying to get that great photo just because for me, it's a mixture of two things that I really enjoy. I mm -hmm. love photography, but more than that, I love my kid more than anything. So I'm like, if I can combine these two things that I really enjoy and love, then I'm all about it. I just don't want to take it over the top. Um, but I do. I think that... Um, as somebody, as a, as a novice photographer, <laughs> um, I do love the fact that so many people are getting into photography. Mm -hmm. And I also love the fact that it is always available at your fingertips. Well, that's because... the thing because when I was, uh, we did my daughter's birthday party at uh, Azure Skate. I, th I was thinking, okay, well, I can put it on manual and then try to change the settings. But like, no, no, this is a kid's birthday party. Everyone's moving. It's a low light situation. I'm just going to put it on auto, 
to turn off flash and just go from there. I fix it in post. That's it. <laughs> Which I did. Because then it makes it better for... See, in that situation, you want to be in the moment. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to have to worry about playing with 14 settings on your camera to make sure you get the perfect shot. She's laughing right then in that moment or she's slipping and falling on her butt and you want to save that forever. Oh, yeah. Well, know? that's the thing because I... I posted maybe like uh, 25 or 50 photos, but I took over 200. Sure. And when I also go, when I did my little street photography in downtown Dunedin, Mm -hmm. I walked for about six miles up and down Dunedin, and I took maybe 500 photos and only posted 12. Well, I think that's pretty common with any quote unquote photography Mm -hmm. session, though. Um, You know, you just have to. Oh, this sounds so pretentious, but <laughs> you just have to be organic and go with how you feel oh, in the gosh, moment. Just, of course. I mean, As I puff the... on my pipe. Uh, man you know, bun. <laughs> my, my man bun. <laughs> Indubitably. In the thought. Um, so I do feel that you have to be present at the moment and it has to be organic. Um, but that's super common to take yeah. uh, you know, quite a few photos. And then once you have it up on your computer screen, and it's not on this tiny little screen, but it's up, it's in front of you, or go old school and you actually get those photos printed and you physically look at them in your hand, then you can pick through and choose the ones that you think are the best, Mm -hmm. you know, and I I think that's a great way to go about it. But see, it's funny. I feel like, and I know that's not the case, but I kind of feel like two things are being said at the same time because there's something about being in the moment, but then there's also trying to get the right picture. Like, cause you were talking about like, cause when I take a picture, like we'll just use our, our kid as an example. She's, in her high chair eating and she's just being silly I'll snap a picture if her eyes are closed her eyes are closed if she's you know got food in the air because she just at that moment happened to pick something up and throw it that's the picture that is the moment in time not necessarily the two seconds before where she looks really cute smiling so it's like to me you're either doing one or the other you're either are literally capturing a moment in time in order to remember or you're trying to capture something specific well i think it's what is uh it's the mindset of what like your daughter's eating you're not going to sit up you're not setting up a photo shoot you're just there enjoying the moment it's a mindset of okay i want actually let's flip it have your daughter eat but let's make it as a photo shoot we'll spend two hours well, she's not going to sit there for two hours. <laughs> but let's, just set, let's set up a time frame for two hours, have our lights, make sure everything's perfect in a certain sense of the word that if that moment uh, happened, at least everything will be in like foreground is in focus. Everything's mm-hmm. a good bokeh in the back. Sure. Everything is all lighted up well, but it's just a mindset. Oh, I'm sitting here with my daughter eating. and Oh, hey, click photo and you're done the reason that i think it falls somewhere in the middle i think it falls somewhere in the middle i think you joe the point that you're making you're the normal person right you're the the regular everyday joe public (laughs) 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 our daughter does something adorable which she does all day every day because she's the cutest Wait a and, minute. Oh, no, she, my daughter's the cutest. Well, okay, we'll do it by Jerry, age. Jerry. <laughs> um, and here you thought it would be between us. That's oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so so you're the, the average person. Our daughter's doing something adorable. You take out your phone, you snap a picture, and that's the end of it. Then you have people like Josh and I who are a little more into photography, right? So we're like, okay, we're thinking of composition and lighting and da 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 but really, it falls somewhere in the middle. If I were you in that moment and she were doing something, I wouldn't pick out, take out my phone and take a single photograph. I would snap four in a row and pick my favorite one of those four. But again, that's because you take mm-hmm. over 200 and you pick 12 when it's all said and done. But the reason that I'm asking, because it seems interesting, because like I know there are times where we'll be sitting on the couch and I'll be playing with Charlotte. And you're like, oh, that's really cute. And you'll go to pull out your phone and take a photo. And you're like, oh, she moved. And it's like, we'll sit there for a half an hour where I'll keep trying That's to do... That's an exaggeration. Uh, depending, it's not necessarily. <laughs> it's a slight exaggeration, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I'll sit there and I'll keep trying... Like, if, for example, if I'm wrestling with her and I'm tipping her upside down or something like that, I will do it again. And then again. And then again. So you can sit there and, and get she those multiple... <laughs> so you can get those multiple photos. And like to me, it's like, that's not capturing a moment in time. That's trying to set up a moment in time. Like, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, to me, that's where it's different. Instead of just capturing the photo, and if she happens to be on the way up, oh, well, she happens to be on the way up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that is a capture in a moment of time. That's not... Well, a lot of people, like, um, 
let's not say like normal people and photographers. It's the uh, uh, upcoming generation. Mm-hmm. They just they take the photos and share it mm-hmm. with their friends and not family, but their friends. Because, <laughs> yeah. oh, this generation is going to be so, I don't know. <laughs> they got snapped with the expiring photos. and Right. But it's more of like, they think in like Joe in your terms they capture in the moment but they also want to make it look pretty like so they'll slap a, a filter or something through Instagram or Snapchat with the funny uh, effects or stickers they put on it to make it look cute and, and mm-hmm. cuddly and funny and oh ha 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 look, laugh because I was uh, uh, someone took a picture of me and I got milks coming out my nose right I, I definitely I, I think you're accurate there mm-hmm. but I still think uh, even in this situation where you're talking about me being just, you know, your standard average, just point and what it is, what it is, mm-hmm. and you guys going for the perfect shot, regardless of what it is that you're doing. I still think even with this current generation or, you know, the younger generations, that's still a thing. I, well, yeah, you'll have there are outliers. still Like there's, for example, the there's a girl that I work with that we're friends with that takes a lot of uh, Instagram pictures and my wife's like, who is her photographer? Because they're always great photos. It's not just an average, like, hey, you look cute in your bathing suit. Let me get a photo. I mean, there's composition to it. There is yeah. there is a lot of thought and time and effort. Um, and she could be Instagram famous because these are great photos. <laughs> um, but you can definitely tell that they took 200 and picked 12. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, like, like I, I keep saying, it's just the mindset of the sure. person. Because we're like... Uh, I took one picture of did my little street photography. I took a picture of this older couple there was walking down the street hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And I took maybe uh, eight photos of them. I was following them. Uh, uh, this Creeper. Is- <laughs> <laughs> That's a public <laughs> space. This is why men have a bad name. <laughs> Once again, I am very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, it's one of the things you, so cap- you-, <laughs> you capture the moment of these two people as they're going through their everyday lives as far as street sure. photography. Yeah. And don't justify it. Yeah. Are you judging me, bro? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so a, is the law. <laughs> you're a father, for God's sake. <laughs> Older couple. <laughs> hey, what you're into, you're into. Okay? <laughs> this is Florida. They're all old couples. <laughs> That's all we have here. That's our state bird. <laughs> <laughs> the snowbird. It's on the flag. Yeah. Um. It's a blue wig. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, old couple. Anyway, but it's creeping. basically, it's like, okay, taking a picture. And it's like, you, before you even take a picture, you're looking at, okay, what is going on? Mm-hmm. What's everything going on around or before them or after them? Is it before you take the photos? It's, like, it's just the mindset of how sure. you look at uh, what you're taking a photo of. I mean, if there's a car driving by in the background, you're going to wait until that car passes before you snap your picture because you don't want to have to take it out and post. If you can avoid it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Joe's staring at us like, uh. All right. He lost me. <laughs> well, it, I guess, I don't know. I just, I think it's really, for me, it's just funny. I guess for lack of yeah. better words because I, what makes it really funny for me is the fact that I actually did this in school Mm -hmm. like not only high school but also college and took you know (laughs) classes on this on doing that we did go out and take pictures of cars and flowers and people and all this stuff and just random you know especially down in like ebor was where we went you know doing the same kind of thing like Mm -hmm. you did in dunedin taking pictures of old people yeah of just random creeper (laughs) except we're in a classroom with a teacher who's pointing things out we're not just some random dude on the sidewalk (laughs) as a group of creepers we're being taught how to be creepers i believe that's called a pod of creepers (laughs) a passe but i just i don't know i think it's interesting that i went through all of this and I'm the one who's sitting here going you take the picture you take the picture that's what it is well, I think because you're I, I don't want to say forced <laughs> you're forced to do it against your will but no there's something where I don't know it's just like it's a, a personal level of how you look at like your, your how would you look at like a DSLR say oh that's a fancy expensive camera I, I can do the same photo of my phone. I, I look at it like any type of tech. Like, mm-hmm. there's a ton of options to it. I think they're really, really cool and interesting, and like that's the way to do it. But you need to know 
about it in order to use it appropriately. Like oh, yeah. I could pick up her DSLR and I've been out of it for so long now because college was forever ago. But <laughs> I, I've Back been out of it for day. so long. I don't really <laughs> remember all the aperture settings and the shutter speeds and all that stuff. I remember that there's there and that's mm-hmm. what they're for. But if I wanted to take a picture of something, I couldn't remember how to do it because it's okay. been so long. Because mm-hmm. um, you're, you're, yeah. Because I, when I look at when I look at it and say, like, okay, I want to get a uh, the nifty fifty, and get a nifty fifty lens, a, mm-hmm. a nice prime lens for a good, you know, like uh, portrait shots or when I go out back out creeping on old people. <laughs> so if anybody wants to sponsor this podcast <laughs> so that Josh can afford this lens. He, he needs the long well, <laughs> the really seen, long lens so he can be really far back. What was it? The uh, uh, 70 to 200 millimeter uh, Tascom. That's like what? Uh, $1,200, $1,300. With the little stick stand for the end of the lens to hold it. No, that's why I got my tripod. I put that yeah, lens. but this is the speed stick like they use in sports. So it's not, you don't have to set up an entire tripod. Just, just extend the legs and just that as a mono. <laughs> Man hack. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also when you look at like the newer ones, like the, the uh, mirrorless cameras that just came out, like Nikon and Canon's has released their, their new uh, mirrorless cameras. I'm guessing you would look at it and say, oh, those are even more expensive and more uh, flashy on what we have currently. That would be something that you would have to really be in, excuse me, really be yeah. into photography in order to justify. Like, there's no reason for me to go out and get the camera for myself. It would be a waste of money. Because they are, they are expensive. I mean, the body alone is just for like a kit lens that's what, four grand? Mm-hmm. Because they just came out. I mean, even the camera that I got for my wife when I got that for, I think it was a Christmas or something like that. Um, I bought that for it because of her love of mm-hmm. photography and kind of this was like my like here go play really get into it instead of using the the old because this was at the time where that was kind <laughs> of like she had digital cameras but they were the smaller kind of yeah. for lack of better words crappier digital cameras hey. the point and shoots be nice yeah. to my point and shoots <laughs> the got old the job point and shoots not even the new point and shoots <laughs> that's true um so it was like I, I wanted to kind of nurture that's the word I'm kind of think of you know mm-hmm. nurture her her love of that and really go out there and do it and something that she wanted to do like I was also at the time and, and she's aware of this I was looking into like you know the green screens and the lights and you know kind of getting all that set up almost like a studio setting yeah you know because yeah. it was something that I know that she really enjoyed and I yeah. wanted her to really be able to have the stuff because again me being into the tech and being in it like that's really fun and cool for me you know so it's something that we could get all set up and then it's something she could use and really use to her ability make it worth worthwhile exactly uh <laughs> for someone like me it just it didn't make sense because i'm not going to put that kind of time and energy into because it essentially to you it would be a tool that would be underutilized yes yeah that makes sense yeah that's a perfect <laughs> sense <laughs> <laughs> but even even when I was in school and was doing this and knew about all this stuff, I still, I really, it, it pains me of the, the pictures and the art and stuff like that that I used to have that I don't know where it is anymore. I would love to be able to find this stuff again, but there were pictures that I still have memories of that I absolutely loved of just how the light would come through the trees. Yeah. And even back then, I would still, I'd walk through, I'd see something that would look very photogenic regardless of what the subject was Mm -hmm. and I would just point the camera up to it adjust the lens take the picture and move on I wouldn't sit there and take hundreds of pictures it was still just kind of a that looks great that's a great picture let me snap I would you know make sure everything was appropriate snap and move on to the next subject but I think ultimately sometimes just because you're viewing it with your eyes and you peek through your lens and you think that it's going to come through the same way, it doesn't always end up the exact same way. Well, you can why... always change it when you go back home and like Photoshop it. You <laughs> can true. change all the levels. And... That's true. But I mean, even if even if we're using your example of, you know, there's a branch and the sun's coming through the branch in just this very specific way that you like, um, where you would adjust the lens, set up the perfect shot and take one, uh, somebody like Josh or myself would not only do just that set it up and take the one shot but we might move our camera a centimeter to the left and then um, adjust the lens just enough so that the sunlight comes through in slightly a different manner because of exposure and you know there's all these different elements to it now that doesn't mean that your beautifully composed one photo doesn't come out exactly the way that you're intending 
But I've had plenty of experiences where I've taken the time to set up a photo and by the time I get to the finish line, it still didn't turn out exactly as beautiful as mm-hmm. I saw it in front of my own two eyes, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's it's where it's like uh, you think everything is fine. All of a sudden you get home, you start looking through your, your photos and like, oh, everything's all out of, out of blur just a little bit just a touch just yeah, enough everything is soft focus it's like you're in the dome at IMAX and the edges yeah. are just slightly looking, blurred instead of looking in the middle you're looking at the edge for the entire movie that's it um, but yeah but I do I am 100% on board with the fact that people do have this technology available um, you know that- it's, it's growing so much especially this look the mirrorless ones. You basically take this huge one inch or one and a half inch uh, sensor, mm-hmm. and you're taking awesome photos with it. And it's the same thing where, like, your phone has all the same sensor, but it's a much smaller scale. Sure. But it's I don't know where the line where uh, it'll intersect. Like, you get your expensive mirrorless cameras for like the professionals or the pro consumers. Mm-hmm. And then you got Joe with his phone sure. <laughs> taking uh, a photo really quick and stuff like that. Who can take a great photograph with yeah. his phone. I mean, that's the thing. That's that's ultimately what I'm saying is that with the technology that we have, just the average person can shoot some beautiful photographs. And even if the lighting's not quite right, again, with Photoshop Express on your phone, yep. you can change the lighting just enough and post it on your Facebook because ultimately that's all everybody's trying to do it. Well, Facebook also compresses the heck out of it. That's true. That's a different <laughs> As subject. far as the, the intersecting uh, question that you had there, aside from the fact of what the OS was on it, isn't that kind of what the Windows Phone 1080 that we had talked about before? Oh, yeah. That really was an intersection of it was. your... C- professional style cameras and a cell phone yeah the nokia camera was what a 40 something megapixel camera with a large uh sensor it was it was made for being just that yeah and there was a lot of photographers uh, a buddy of ours as we talked about had one of those and Mm -hmm. is also a photographer amateur but still a photographer a good one um that absolutely loved it and said it was really big as a backup camera for a lot of professional photographers. They oh, yeah. still had their big DSLRs, but they had that phone as a quick snapshot while they're going around to be able to get those kinds of things. With the way technology and people have changed and having the cameras and the image quality and how they've grown, why don't you think other manufacturers haven't picked up to do the same kind of concept? Not necessarily with Ooh. every phone, right? but having like that ties. option of kind of like, here's all your Samsung lines, your S8, your S9, your Notes, and your your P's that have the, you know, the, the photographer lens mm-hmm. where they have a line for that. Why don't you think that hasn't picked well, up with it being such a big deal? I think it's because it's the general public doesn't really care uh, as long as the photos look crystal clear and they can shoot 4K uh, video, that's all they really care about. With the Nokia 41 megapixel camera or Windows phone, I think it was hampered because it was a Windows mobile device. And not many people was like looking at it and say, well, I got a choice between Android and, or Android, Samsung, and Apple. Why would... Why would I want Windows on my phone? And Which it is a shame. Look, I really wish yeah. more people got into it. I, I mean, really we need a competition. Do. That would have been a great. <laughs> with between, it was a great. Phone. Instead of just two parties, we got three parties. That'd be even great because now you got three people trying to outdo each other. Now you only got two, and well, on one side is a whole bunch of manufacturers trying to outdo each other with Apple with, as a singular. But on your case, with your point, is because the cost of actually doing research and development for that and getting it out to the masses it'd be too expensive. I would. Let me pull that because the <laughs> the newest phones now are uh, reaching fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that phone would be too grand. I'm thinking because the amount of time and resources and how it would be a larger phone. But there's a demand for it. There yeah, was, there was a lot of people that had that phone. Like that was one. Of, I think that was the most popular Windows phone. It, yeah, it was. was I was that... I was looking at them like. That's my next phone. Well, that's just it. Yeah. I would have gotten it myself, even though my wife was the photographer. I would have gotten that phone. (laughs) 
and I would have handed it to her to take pictures when we were out places, mm -hmm. you know, just so we could have it. But I was absolutely looking into it. The only thing that stopped me was because the fact that it was on the one carrier. It was on AT and T. Yeah, and I didn't want to pay the extra monthly just for that one specific phone. Um, but so I mean, there's definitely a market for it. There's there, a demand it's a small, for it. It's a small market, though. It's because one of the things is there. All these companies, this is a business. I mean, they have yes. to. They're pumping out these devices for the masses Correct. and they're not going to make a, a, a short run of phones for let's say a thousand people out of a million mm -hmm. because like again that phone is going to be two maybe twenty five hundred dollars yeah at the, at the end of the day and, and of course this is going to get roasted with tech reviews and the media is going to say the new Apple P with twenty five hundred dollars is going to be revolutionary, and everyone's going to be like, "I'm not paying twenty five hundred. That's the cost of a laptop." Well, the technology <laughs> changes so fast; it would become obsolete within a year anyway. Well, it depends you know, on depends this, on the manufacturer. You can say the same thing though about what's out there current. I just mean, you know, if we're talking about uh, cameras incorporated into cell phones specifically, cell phones become obsolete so fast. I mean, their technology is constantly advancing. By the time you pay off your $1,400 phone, the two next versions of those have already come out. Yeah. You know? And we're already seeing it now with the, the Note 9s. They're sure. uh, $1,000. The new Apple 10. With the I new have to S stop Pen, myself right? because I want to say X, but it's 10. <laughs> Is already breaching that thousand dollar mark for the newer ones, and right? The, like I said, it's fourteen hundred dollars for the 10s Max, mm -hmm. but not everybody is going to go out. There's a lot of people actually not getting the newer phones because they see that price tag. Sure, it's it's the cost of a laptop now. It's it's a MacBook. Well, and it is. It's frustrating to um, finally invest in you know a newer piece of technology and within a couple of months there's another version behind that so i understand why the consumers are to the point that they're like yeah that's a really cool feature that's really neat or whatever but there's going to be another one that comes out right after that so i'm just going to wait for the next one yeah you know you have your galaxy s7 and then your eight and then you're not you know it's, it's just every year yeah. every year yeah. but i think within the closing is that with the dslrs mm -hmm. because dslrs as a digital format have lasted so long sure as a tool is this slight uh, incremental updates and everything like that mm -hmm. is yes I would like to say that your point is valid because technology moves a lot quicker um, one thing I want to know is that if anyone listening is that do you have any insight do, what do you use as a, uh, a, a camera phone or a camera mm -hmm. uh, do you use uh, do you uh, artistic style look at things or the regular Joe style <laughs> way of looking shoot. at life. <laughs> <laughs> Point and shoot and hope it comes out. <laughs> shoot and pray. <laughs> shoot and pray. Shoot and pray. It works. <laughs> Just let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know on email, Twitter, Facebook, all the all the social medias. <laughs> all the medias. Even Google Plus. So I haven't posted it. <laughs> I think Aww. Google Plus is dead. Or our, speaking of photography, our Instagram account that I don't think we've used. I've, I've used it. Oh, okay. I posted, <laughs> I posted, uh, I think three photos. Your, your creeper photos of the old people? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that went on my personal. Oh, okay. <laughs> and my 500px profile and all that. <laughs> but yeah, let us know. Uh, tell us that we're wrong in certain aspects or right in other ways. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's what we're here for. Yeah. We need the feedback. We want it. We crave it. <laughs> Give us to me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for listening to another episode. I know it went long, but hey, it's a lot of information that we packed into it. <laughs> because I think it's because of Joe and his... Nah, it's my wife. She just wouldn't stop talking. I know. I was sitting here like, okay, let's wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks thank for, you for having listening. me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of Geek 2.0 Podcast. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash geek 2.0 podcast. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter at geek 20 podcast. Don't forget to visit our website at geek 20 podcast.com for older episodes, news, and much more. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast through your favorite podcatcher player of choice. The Geek 2.0 Podcast is part of the Collective Network.